Welcome to Art Appreciation. We are now at Unit 2. In this unit, we will talk about art history. At the end of this unit, the learners are expected to compare important characteristics of art based on the era or movement. Specifically, at the end of the lessons, the learners are expected to First, describe the different features and qualities of various arts depending on the different periods or movements. Second, determine the artists and their artworks that represent the varied periods or movements, and create a timeline and the contributions of the diverse periods or movements in the world of art. In Unit 2, Lesson 1, we are going to talk about Prehistoric Art. Do you have any idea about prehistoric art? This refers to artifacts made before there was a written record. Long before the oldest written languages were developed, people had become expert at creating forms that were both practical and beautiful. The earliest art comes from the Paleolithic era. The Old Stone Age, but it was in the Neolithic era where the most important developments in human history were seen. The way people live today, settled in cities, protected by laws, eating food from farms all this dates back approximately 10,000 years ago to the neolithic era take a look at the picture the earliest forms of prehistoric art are extremely primitive the cupule it is a mysterious type of paleolithic cultural marking which amounts to no more than a hemispherical or cup-like scouring of the rock surface the early sculptures are such crude representations of humanoid shapes that some experts doubt whether they are works of art at all. See some examples on the right side. How can you describe it? It is not until the Upper Paleolithic, from roughly 40,000 BCE onwards, that anatomically modern man produces recognizable carvings and pictures. A number of highly sophisticated techniques such as radiometric testing, uranium slash thorium dating and thermoluminescence are now available to help establish the date of ancient artifacts from the Paleolithic era and later. However, dating of ancient art is not an exact science, and results are often dependent on tests performed on the layer of earth and debris in which the artifact was lying, or in the case of rock engraving, an analysis of the content and style of the markings. Animal drawings using regular side profiles, for instance, are typically older than those using three-quarter profiles. Look at the artifacts. How old do you think they are? Have you seen any of these in real life? Let us now quickly proceed to the cave art. What is a cave art? Prehistoric cave art is not really an art movement as it is a period in humanity's artistic development. It predates writing, printmaking and encompasses the genesis of both early sculpture and painting. Very few art pieces stand the test of time and only the toughest sculptures and paintings made with plenty of pigment, and presumably sheltered from the elements, have managed to last tens of thousands of years. Do you see the pictures on the side? What do they show? Well, like other tribes today, prehistoric people often represented their world and beliefs through visual images, paintings, sculptures, engravings and later. Pottery reveal not only a quest for beauty but also complex social systems and spiritual concepts. Their lifestyles depended on hunting and foraging for food or later on pastoral agriculture. Works from this prehistoric period are not always simple, but can be quite complex. The Lascaux cave paintings for example were created with brushes made from animal fur. Because the people who made these art pieces were amateurs, there is evidence of their desire to show both realism and to use abstraction in an effort to make the art more portable. Paleolithic artists have five main colors at their disposal, yellow, red, brown, black and white. White is more rare, but it is seen at Lascaux cave. Just observe the paintings on this side. These are Lascaux cave paintings dated from 15,000 to 17,000 years old. 
On the upper right is also a cave painting of Bison, in Altamira Cave, near Santander, Spain. Isn't it amazing? In some cases, features from lost pigmentation or worn features may have been lost due to time, not ever knowing what the original works looked like. Of all the known prehistoric works of art, 70% may be attributed to hunter-foragers, 13% to herders and stock raisers, and 17%. To people with an organized economy such as farmers and livestock breeders. Look at these pictures. The first one is a drawing of a lean bear or a hyena and a panther in Chauvet Pond d'Arc, Ardeche, France. Another one is a cave painting of a horse. It is important to take note that the cave art of all social groups consists of five principal motifs. Human figures. Animals. Tools and weapons rudimentary local maps and symbols or ideograms these motifs occur on portable objects engraved sculpted or clay modeled and immovable surfaces like rock paintings and engravings we now go to lesson 2 egyptian art we know that all of us are familiar with egypt including its pyramids and sand dunes but do you know that they also have very interesting art let us find out Art is an essential aspect of any civilization, do you agree? Once the basic human needs have been taken care of such as food, shelter, some form of community law, and a religious belief, cultures begin producing artwork, and often all of these developments occur more or less simultaneously. Now, what is ancient Egyptian art? This type of art includes the painting, sculpture, architecture, and other arts produced by the civilization in the lower Nile Valley from 5000 BCE to 300 CE, reached considerable sophistication in painting and sculpture, and was both highly stylized and symbolic. Natural resources in the Nile Valley During the rise of ancient Egypt included building and decorative stone, copper and lead ores, gold, and semi-precious stones, all of which contributed to the architecture, monuments, jewels, and other art forms for which this civilization would become well known. Are you familiar with the Nile Valley? Egyptian art is divided into three periods, Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. The Old Kingdom is the period in the 3rd millennium BCE when Egypt attained its first continuous peak of civilization and complexity and achievement. Under King Djoser who was the first king of the 3rd dynasty of the Old Kingdom, the royal capital of Egypt was moved to Memphis and a new era of building was initiated at Saqqara under his regime. Indeed, the Old Kingdom is perhaps best known for the large number of pyramids constructed at this time as pharaonic burial places. For this reason, the Old Kingdom is frequently referred to as the Age of the Pyramids. Look at the pyramids on the side. The first one is a step pyramid of Djoser at Saqqara, Egypt. The second photo is the Great Pyramid of Giza, built during the reign of the King Khufu, 2589 to 2566 BCE, also known as Cheops, of the Fourth Dynasty, Egypt. The Middle Kingdom of Egypt is the period in the history of ancient Egypt stretching from the establishment of the 11th dynasty to the end of the 13th dynasty, between 2055 and 1650 BCE. During this period, the funerary cult of Osiris rose to dominate Egyptian popular religion. What can you say about it? The Middle Kingdom is usually regarded as the high point of Egyptian culture. The tomb of Menchuhotep II is itself a work of art, sculpted from the cliffs near Thebes, which merges seamlessly with the natural landscape to create the effect of a wholly organic work. The paintings, frescoes, and statuary which accompanied the tomb also reflect a high level of sophistication and, as always, symmetry. Just look at these examples. Jewelry was also refined greatly at this time with some of the finest pieces in Egyptian history dated to this era. A pendant from the reign of Sinusret II, circa 1897 to 1878 BCE, which he gave to his daughter as fashioned of thin gold wires attached to a solid gold backing inlaid with 372 semi-precious stones. The picture on the lower right shows a granite head from a sphinx of the Egyptian pharaoh Sinusret III during the 12th dynasty, 1870 BCE. 
It is important to take note that, the most striking aspect of Middle Kingdom art, however, is the subject matter. Common people, instead of nobility, feature more often in art from this period than any other. The influence of the first intermediate period continues to be seen in all the art from the Middle Kingdom, where laborers, farmers, dancers, singers, and domestic life receive almost as much attention as kings, nobles, and the gods. Artwork and tombs continue to reflect the traditional view of the afterlife. But literature from the time questioned the old belief and suggested that one should concentrate on the only life one could be sure of, the present. These are some examples of their artwork in tombs. We have the gods of Cyrus, Anubis, and Horus, from a tomb painting. The New Kingdom of Egypt, also referred to as the Egyptian Empire, is the period between the 16th century and the 11th century BCE, covering the 18th, 19th, and 20th dynasties of Egypt. This era, like the first, is also often characterized as disorganized and chaotic, and the artwork held up as proof, but there were many fine works. Created during this time, they were simply on a smaller scale. Tomb paintings, statuary, temple reliefs, pectorals, headdresses, and other jewelry of high quality continued to be produced and the Hyksus, though often vilified by later Egyptian writers, contributed to cultural development. They copied and preserved many of the written works of earlier history which are still extant and also copied statuary and other artworks. As seen on the pictures, these are overseer of cattle Neferhotep during the Second Intermediate Period, 1650-1550 BCE. On the lower part is the Egyptian Queen Nefertiti. Observe their art, what can you say about it? Now. That is the end of our lessons 1 which is about cave art and lesson 2 which we discussed about Egyptian art. Have you learned something? If you have any questions, you can leave a private comment below. Coming up next will be our lessons about Classical art medieval art and architecture, and Renaissance. Thank you for watching.